What's going on, everybody? Hurry up offense back. It's Teach joined by Mason this week. So we got another two-man tandem. JT could make it this week, but we're going to talk about week two, go game by game, give our picks against the spread, and I'll talk about other plenty of great bets that we can make throughout the week. So Mason, we missed you last week, but how you been, man? Good, man. Work is busy. Tried to get on last week, but you know, the internet and Zoom and whatnot was really bugging. So sorry to miss last week, but I'm back and better. So Ready, ready to get started. But JT decided to take your the page out of your playbook, so it's, it's all good. Hopefully next week we'll be back and we'll be back in full strength. Uh, before we start talking about games, man, I know you're not a huge Aaron Rodgers guy, but I mean that's kind of the talk of the league right now. He was one of the biggest storylines going into the season. He makes it four snaps, and his year with the Jets is done. But two part question: What do you think this means for the Jets, and do you think Rodgers plays next year? So what does what this means to the Jets, man? You know, it, it, it's just a massive blow to this offense. Uh, you go out, you get the guy that you want, the guy that you need, the, literally that missing piece in that offense. And you happen to see that happen last night on live television was just, you know, for all of us, we were just like, hmm. And I thought it was just an ankle, but then, and then he was just kind of sitting on the grass and I was like, maybe he's just pissed off at his left tackle. But, and then they like helped him off. And I was like, Ooh, maybe it's a little more serious than we think. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what was the second part of that question? I'm sorry. Nick Rogers plays again, or do you think this is done? Do dude, think? I think I think he's done. Yeah, I think he's got to be. I think he's done. He's got to be, dude. Oldest player in the league, pops and Achilles. I don't know. I don't see yeah. it happening. That, that, no. that, that, that feels a little tough. Yeah, now you got Coach Sala talking about Zach Wilson's their guy. And they're not going to make any calls. So I'm very interested to see where this goes in regards to the quarterback position. Fingers crossed, maybe like a guard issue. <laughs> I think yeah, good. I don't know about you. I didn't watch the second half. I don't know if you watched any of that second half, but I saw a little bit of Wilson in the first half. He didn't look terrible. I saw the pick he had, but kind of the same as last year a little bit. But That pick was – that was a bad one. But for the most part, I don't think he played, like, absolutely horrible. Uh, I actually think the Bills covered you did a pretty good job. Um, but that being said, we kind of know what Zach Wilson is, and he's not good right. enough to beat Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of where the issue lies. But, yeah. Tough way to end week one, but that makes it uh, all the more exciting to get into week two. So let's go ahead and kick things off talking about Thursday night football. Wish we had uh, JT here to talk about this. Eagles, it's Vikings, uh, and man, Minnesota is coming off an interesting game. Kirk Cousins had some throws that looked awesome, and then there were a lot of drives where he looked anything but awesome. Uh, Greg Bockworth then, but if you watch the game, he kind of uh, un unraveled a lot of drives that could have ended in points. Uh, and now the Eagles favored by six and a half. This is going to be one half of my... Uh, Lock of the week when it comes to teaser play. So I like build up and you can cover the six and a half. Honestly, I think Minnesota's defense, as much as I think it's going to be better than last year, it's still going to be rough. I think Philadelphia's a good team. You got to see him firsthand this week as a Patriots fan. So what do you think about Philly and Minnesota going into week two? Yeah, watching the uh, week one matchup with the Pats and the Eagles, the Eagles didn't really play well. They got super, super lucky in that first quarter going up 16 nothing, and then the Patriots kind of started playing a little bit better. Sure. They actually won that game. So seeing the Eagles not very great week one, I have a hard time believing they're going to continue that same pattern next week at home. So I like your logic. I think they, I think they cover six and a half pretty easily. Um, yeah, I don't see them struggling much against this Vikings team. So, it, and I will say this Philadelphia team, they're pretty good on the road, but it's something different when they get at home. Like every game last year they played at home, it felt like they found a whole nother gear. And they also beat the Vikings at home week two last year. So it's kind of weird how history repeating uh -huh. itself here. But I'm going to go ahead and lean on my laurels and say, yeah, Philly gets it done for a second, yeah. second year. All right, on to Sunday. And uh, how about a little Chiefs-Jags matchup? Man, this is... Uh, it's good to see that the Jags are like competitive and become a team because otherwise, like five years ago, this would have been one that we just like breeze past. But it's Trevor Lawrence versus Patrick Mahomes. And, you know, after week one, I saw a lot of tweets out there saying, hey, you know, those tier two quarterbacks right behind Mahomes, the Josh Allen, the uh, excuse me, the Josh Allen, the, the Joe Burrows, the Justin Herberts of the world. People are making an argument that Trevor Lawrence should be in that. So let me ask you first, is Trevor Lawrence that lit? Is like, is, do you think he's moving to that tier? And then what do you think about this one? It's currently Chiefs minus three. They will get at least Chris Jones back. And I would think they're going to get Travis Kelsey back too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then about Trevor Lawrence, I wouldn't put him in that tier yet. I think he's just, just under, but like that top yeah. guy that next tier. Um, but I would say middle of the season, sure. You can put him there sure. if he continues this up. Um, 
But yeah, like you said, assuming Kelsey's back this week, assuming Chris Jones is back this week, I think the Chiefs roll here. Um, we saw that offense last week, Thursday night. Didn't look good. Did not look good. It, and just, not to the fold of Mahomes, but Kadarius Tony in his hands. I mean, sheesh, my guy. Yeah, that yeah, that was that was bad. So yeah, I, I would gladly take the Chiefs here. I might even tease it up a little bit. So honest uh, honestly, anytime you get Kansas City by a field goal or less, it feels like a smart play. So I'll probably play it as well. Um and yeah, man, if Kadarius Tony's doing anything anything this week that's not the jokes machine, they're wasting his time because my man has got to figure it out. Uh, but you see how important Travis Kelsey is. So hopefully he is back. Um, hyperextended knee, you get the 10-day rest. I think that he's going to be back. Uh, and they do also pay Chris Jones. So that's a huge impact uh, player getting back in the mix as well. Jags interior offensive line, not great. So I could see that being an impact add as well. So I like the Chiefs minus three. So do you. Let's move on to our next game. Raiders Bills. Man. Uh, Raiders win a squeaker against the the Broncos. I, I picked them to win that game. I'm not terribly surprised by what we saw. I don't think the Broncos are all that great, and that's ultimately kind of why I made that pick. And then there's the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen, you know, is my favorite player in the league, and oh my god, yeah, like it was hard to see Rodgers go down, but it was hard to see and sit through Josh Allen and his decision making the other night as well. I mean, guy was forcing throws, and really was the reason that you know the door was open for the Jets to win that game. So. I'm hoping for a bounce back game. To me, the Raiders have one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Eight and a half is a ton of points. I'll probably lean Buffalo. I'm hoping for a kind of a bounce back game for Allen. I'm hoping for a bounce back game for Buffalo as a whole. Uh, but where do you think this one goes? Yeah, I would agree. You know, back at home facing a uh, far worse defense than they faced last night. Um, and then last night watching that game, I didn't watch much, but I had the uh, DraftKings boost with uh, Rodgers and Josh Allen to throw for three or more passing three touchdowns. Cuts, yeah. Once Rodgers was out, it was all on Josh Allen. So instead of throwing three passing touchdowns, the man threw three picks. So yeah. Love to see it. yeah, yeah. But definitely a bounce back game. I could see them winning by 10 plus with ease. Um, Bills aren't starting out until. No yeah, and they they get to go back home, which I mean, Met, MetLife's not terribly far away, but it's different in front of Bills Mafia, so that that could be a, a nice boost of morale that they need. But yeah, getting to your point about Rodgers, I bet his rushing prop, I bet him over one and a half touchdowns, and I'm thinking he got hurt in the first drive. They're going to give me my refund. Nah, DraftKings said mm, mine <laughs> took my money, man. I'm kind of pissed about that. But anyways, you you roll the dice, you play the game, and that's sometimes what happens. But uh, yeah, I'll take the Bills minus eight and a half reluctantly. Um, but if we see Josh Allen's turnover issues continue, then this is going to be uh, a problematic season because like you said, the Jets, okay, sure. One of the best defenses in football, the Raiders complete opposite end of the spectrum. So I'm going to need to need to see a big game there from Josh Allen. Uh, and I will say, I think the Bills defense also played pretty well. Number one oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. win rate uh, of week one. So I also think that is a, a tough matchup there for, for Vegas. Sure. Sure. Next up Seahawks. Lions. You got the Lions who, over the last two games, obviously spanning two years, they ended Aaron Rodgers' career in Green Bay with a W, and then they dethroned Kansas City as they're raising the banner. So they're hot. And then Seattle with maybe the most head-scratching loss of any team I saw in week one. I did not expect them to get dogged by the Rams, led by Matt Stafford and literally just about no one else. So, man, what do you think about this one? Right now, it's... uh a five and a half point spread for the Lions over Seattle. Do you think Seattle bounces back or do you think the Lions make it a 2 0 start? Yeah, that's a tough one, but I'm going to just start off by saying I am so glad I did not pick the Seahawks in my survivor. <laughs> Dude, I was telling you, I was like dead <laughs> set. Oh, Seattle's going to win. Oh. Yeah, so uh, shout out Commanders for getting the job done there. But um, I feel like this wouldn't be a bad, bad idea to take the Seahawks this week, even though they're on the road. I don't know, man. That, that's a tough line. Yeah, five and a half is kind of that awkward point. We're past three, but we're not quite at a touchdown. Right. So spread's a little iffy right now. Ultimately, I think. I man, think I'm winning the Seahawks with the spread. They may not win. Yeah, I, I think, think I'm they definitely you. cover. Maybe like a game-winning field goal and the next team doesn't score on the next drive or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, these are two teams that I also think have done a lot to improve their defense. So now we get to see kind of put up or shut up. Like. Did Detroit right. really make strides in the right direction? Did Seattle drafting a corner in the top five, did that really pay off? So I think I'll take Seattle getting the points, but I'm really indifferent on this one. So that's ultimately kind of why I lean that way. Speaking of the Lions defense, though, Aiden Hutchinson. Dude, I don't know if you watched that first Thursday night uh, game. This man is on his way to 15-sack season, and, and I'm almost assured that now. I thought the Seahawks were a sure win last week, too. So don't take my don't take my word for it. But, uh, yeah, man, man looked awesome. And it was really interesting. They lined him up over the guard, and he was just pushing dudes around. Yeah, he, he, I've been high on him since he got drafted, since I was watching him in college, man. I was like, dude, whoever gets him, 
at the steal. Yeah. So he'll be that Three. franchise guy for sure. So we're both taking Seattle and the points, but excited to see what Hutchinson does here in week two. Next game, Chargers minus three in Nashville. This is another game that I'm looking at the spread and like, yeah, both teams lost, but if this was week one, is that only a three point spread? Like, yes, it's in Tennessee, but I feel like the Chargers would have a little bit more of a, a uh, little bit more, a few, uh, a few more points, I should say, to lay here. So I'm gonna take the Chargers. Yeah, they're on the road, but it, it took Tua putting up almost 500 yards. It took Tyreek going bananas to take down that Chargers offense. I think Tennessee is going to have a lot harder time, not only one, keeping up, but two, yeah, maybe just moving the ball in general. I mean, I don't know. Ryan Tannehill, I mean, Josh Allen looked rough. Zach Wilson wasn't great, but Ryan Tannehill, just because he played on Sunday, don't let, him, don't let it be forgotten how bad he looked in a dome in New Orleans. So I'm taking the Chargers. Yeah, I'm, I'm also taking the Chargers. Um... They faced Miami week one. Our offense looked great. Defense, not so much. So their defense is going to have to definitely play better this week. Um, when you're facing an offense, like you said, you know, Tannehill at offense, not much there going on. So I, I just have a hard time believing the Chargers dropped two in a row, even though they're on the road, you know, facing the Dolphins last week. Wasn't much they could do with Tua and Tyreek and company. Now you're having, going to face Tannehill, and I couldn't even tell you they're wide receiver one. So. Well, give me, yeah, give you me. can. DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, shit. it's just it's just yeah, Tannehill looks so bad that you almost forgot that DeAndre Hopkins. Works, yeah, there. exactly, exactly. But give me the Chargers with ease. Yeah, and, and you know what? I I gotta give my kudos to DraftKings. I'm about to bet this game, and I see I got bonus bets, basically covering <laughs> the Aaron Rodgers stuff. So you know what, DraftKings? Everything I said earlier, I apologize. I take it back. Uh, I'm just an idiot. All right, next game to talk about. Ravens Bengals. Uh, so the Ravens, you know, they beat Houston. I don't think that was a surprise to anybody. And then you get the Bengals, who were coming off a really disappointing week one, which the same can be said about them last year. So going to this one, it's Bengals minus three, despite being the team with a loss. And, you know, uh, Baltimore's coming off the win here. But Mason, which which way are you leaning this one? Yeah, watching a little bit of that Bengals game. Obviously, coming in, I, I knew Joe Burrow was not healthy, you know, fully. But obviously, if he wasn't good to go, he wouldn't have played. So, dude, I don't know. He didn't even throw for 100 yards, did he? No, and he got benched midway through the fourth quarter. Yeah. Yeah. So, you got to expect them to all bounce back this week. You know, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins didn't even have a single catch. So, you got to expect against that Ravens secondary, you, you got to put some more points on the board, especially at home. I'm taking the Bengals. I don't know. I don't know about you, though. I am in the act of betting it right now. I'll take Bengals minus three. Um and Jamar Chase has actually had a ton of success in this matchup um, against Ravens teams who I thought had better secondary. So to me, the matchup's even better for him. And I'm expecting him and Joe Burrow to make up for lost time, what we saw last week. Also, you know, that rain game last week was just kind of the Kickstarter for my uh, my ever never ending push that I think every NFL team should play in a stadium or in a dome, I should say. They all do play in stadiums. All should play in a dome because look, if that game's not played in the rain and Joe Burrow's little baby hands aren't having to deal with that, it's a different game. If Daniel Jones isn't throwing passes that are slipping through receivers' hands, becoming pick sixes, that game's different. Yeah. And then you also get a little bit of the same thing with the Jets game the next night with a little bit of weather there. But just take that randomness out of the you know factor. I just want to watch the best football players in the world go head to head. So I don't know. That's my take yeah, on dude, it. But there was a lot of rain this weekend, dude. Like almost dude, every yeah, it was brutal. Was like, yo, it's raining again. Like, what are we doing? Chicago, I think, had rain too. And yeah, yeah. it just it ruins the the product. I, I just can't do it. I can't do it. So I like All the right, rain. I, gotta, I like what were we saying? Sorry. No, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I got a fantasy question for you then. Let me hear it. I've got Burrow and I've got Tua. I started Burrow last week. Still got the win, but I okay. obviously saw what Tua did. So, like, which one are you leaning this week? Hold on. We're going to obviously talk about Miami in a little bit. And in case anybody else is watching, has the same problem. He has not lost to New England. I don't know, man. That's tough. Well, like, the other thing is, as a Pats fan, like, I don't want to. I think I might go Burrow, honestly. Yeah, I don't want to be, like, rooting heavy for Tua against the Pats if I, you know right. what I mean? So. And, and, and if you're rooting for that Patriots game to become a shootout, I'm sorry, bud. And no. it ain't going to be a New England win. No. No. <laughs> Mac Jones, is, he didn't play too bad second half last week, but he wasn't that good. We'll talk about it in a little bit, but we're All both right. taking the Bengals yeah. and, the, and we're laying the points. All right, Packers-Falcons, Green Bay minus one and a half. Man, Jordan Love didn't look too bad. I thought Matt LaFleur called a great game around him. The rushing attack looked awesome. Speaking of rushing attack looking awesome, Algier and Bijan Robinson, two Ooh. running backs with like 20 plus fantasy points. Bananas, did you see Bijan's first career touchdown? 
mm. little swing pass. He hits the break. The fender goes flying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two yep, tackles. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I mean, yeah. just the guy's a freak. I mean, that's why he was a blue chipper for me last year in the NFL draft. The man's an alien. Even if he does play a devalued position, he makes enough of a difference. So uh, at home, you know what? I think the Falcons get it done. Uh, I think Green Bay's defense has improved from last year. Um, so if they stop the run, this could be problematic because news alert, Desmond Ritter, still not good. Um, but I think Love played a pretty good game last week and he's going to be the Jameis Winston train. So I'm just going to basically alternate my weeks, ebbs and flows. Last week, he's coming off a high. This week, he's going to find a valley. So I think it's going to be a rough game for Jordan Love. And I think ultimately Atlanta's rushing attack gets the job done. What do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of 50-50 right now. Um mm-hmm. You know, the Packers, I think they should be getting back Christian Watson this week. They should be, um, yep. But then again, you got that deadly duo in Atlanta with Algier and Bijan. So, like, wh- whichever one is on the field, they're probably going to dog you and dust you. But like you said, Ritter is not good. He's he, just not good. No, he wasn't. I wasn't even high on him in college either. But yeah, no. last week, who did they play? The Panthers, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, he didn't have to do much, like, in the air. So, like, he had those two running backs to do all his work. The defense played pretty well. So, I think that continues next week. So, I would, I think I'm also going to take the Falcons. Yeah, I, I can see you almost want to call Ritter mid, but then you think about it and you're like, he's not really even mid. He's just yeah, kind he's of – lower than that. mid. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, a lot of Atlanta fans probably wish that he was playing mid. But also, like, I just got to – I got to point this out. Fantasy owners across the country rolling their eyes at the fact that we're calling, calling uh, Bijan and Algier – the one-two punch in Atlanta when we should be talking about Drake London and Kyle Pitts, these two freak aliens back right, in the top yeah. 10, and they just do not get any target share. So shout out Desmond Ritter, shout out Arthur Smith for uh, just pissing off fantasy owners week in and week out. But so let me let me get your pick. I think I'm going to take the Falcons getting a point and a half where you stand. Uh, if you'll take the point and a half, I might as well just take the money line. Okay. Just you'll line take Falcons money line. Rarely, rarely do teams lose by one, but we saw it last, last Thursday too. So I'll take the money line. Fair enough. Staying adjacent to the NFC North and the NFC South, we got Bears heading to Tampa. I'm taking Chicago with the points. You know, uh, I know it wasn't awesome last week offensively, but I also think the Bucs got their, I think they got their like morale win for the season. I I don't think that week one (laughs) performance is going to be indicative of anything moving forward. I I think legitimately the Bears are probably a better team. I'm taking Chicago on the road. What do you think? I think I'm going opposite. Okay. Yeah, Is Baker starting two and zero. Did we get the Baker yeah, songs? I think I think that's going to be the headline of the weekend next week. Baker Bucks two and zero. I can just see it. I don't know. I don't like it, but I just I'm just I'm sensing it. He didn't look bad, but he did look horrible. He did look horrible. They got the win. I saw a little bit of the Bears last week. Justin Fields didn't look great, um, but maybe this week he targets more of his more of his receivers. But we'll see. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna take the Bucks. Yeah. Also, I, I just got to point it out, man. Chase Claypool, uh, what a fall from grace. I uh, almost wore his jersey uh, to a work event uh, last week, and then I was just too embarrassed. And I'm a Notre Dame fan. I'm a Steelers fan. Like, I should love Chase Claypool. And he got us the number 32 overall pick. Like, shout out to the Bears for making such a dumb trade. He is just so bad. <laughs> He's yeah. just not very good. Maybe he bounced back this week. I just he had wasn't bad with you guys. Like that first two years, he, he was kind of nice. Yeah, he was all right. And then now he's like sleepwalking. So, anyways, uh, disappointing to see that waste of a talent. Anyways, Colts, Texans, two rookie quarterbacks, Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud. Uh, this should be a fun one. That's going to take the Texans getting the points at home. Um, I think they're going to be a better team than people expected. Um, and frankly, I think the Colts stayed in that game longer than they should have because that DeForest Buckner touchdown should not have been a DeForest Buckner touchdown. To me, Tank Bixby was down. Like, he gave up on the play. He made himself ineligible. Oh, dude, I saw that too. Yeah, I was thinking uh, the same thing. To me, I thought that he was, you know, conceding his uh, ability to advance the ball, so the play should have been dead. Instead, it becomes a touchdown, close game. Trevor Lawrence has to make a comeback. So, that game was closer than it should have been. I think the Houston Texans are legitimately going to get better and better week in and week out. So, I'll take Houston at home. <clears throat> yeah, you got the two rookies uh, in Richardson and Stroud. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm always saying I wasn't watching much of the games, but like I had the red zone open and, and I was sure. watching red zone or whatever. But from what I saw and from what I've heard, Richardson looked pretty well. He looked pretty good. He did yeah. enough on the speed, did enough in the air, but you know, ran into T. Lawrence and the Jags. So I think I'm going to take the better team. I'm going to take the Colts. Okay. Um, but I think it stays close the entire time. I think that spread is right about where it should be. So I'll take the Colts at minus 122. And also, Houston fans excited about Will Anderson. He looks pretty legit already. So that's that's a huge win for a defense yeah. that needed like a transformative defensive lineman. 
But All I can right. see that one going either way, so but I'll take the Colts. Sure. And that's one and a half point spreads. It's just kind of there in the story. Then we get to San Francisco and the Los Angeles Rams. Rams with a surprise win, but they're still getting eight points. <laughs> Uh, Kyle Shanahan has dominated this matchup between him and uh, Sean or Sean McVay, um, and I'm going to take San Francisco in the eight points. I I, I think kind of like Tampa Bay. I think last week was the cute, like, oh my gosh, the Rams did it. We didn't see that coming. How fun and flirty. But now I think reality sets in, and this team is basically Matt Stafford. If they have Cooper Cup, add him in the mix, and then Aaron Donald and a bunch of like, you know, like uh, Pac-12 level players. Honestly, no disrespect. There's some good players in there, but. It's just not a very good roster, especially when you compare it to the 49ers, who maybe I'm a butthurt Steelers fan. That <laughs> roster is insane, and they got playmakers everywhere. So I just don't see how the Rams can keep up, or, or really, for that matter, slow them down. Yeah, I was shocked that the Rams won last week, too. So yeah. you know, now having to face the 49ers. Granted, you're at home. I don't think it's going to matter much. Um, I think eight points is too little. I think it should be, you know, 10, 10 and a half. But yeah, I I'm moving towards picking 49ers for Survivor this week. So. Ooh. Don't think too much about it. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to go 49ers. Also, um, um, fingers crossed because maybe like Cooper Cup, uh, he's on IR. So actually, don't even count. Right, he can't play. He's, yeah. he's missing the first four games. If Matt Stafford like looks pretty good, but the Rams lose and it's kind of ugly, maybe the Jets are making a call. Like That's the one guy that could be available that's like maybe the Jets can stay competitive if they land a Matt Stafford. And apparently, they made a call to the Rams about Stafford during the offseason. So there's already been a little bit of prior interest. So that could be that could be something there. But anyways, we'll see how it goes this week. I think the 49ers get it done and cover the eight. Next game, Giants and Cardinals. Uh, Giants lay in five and a half here. That's kind of wild. But um, yeah, ultimately, I do think they are the, the better squads. Uh, and uh, the Cardinals, Josh Dobbs, he's going to get the start again. You know, he's gritty. You know, he's got that moxie. But, uh, yeah, Josh Dobbs just is not all that good. And I will say the Giants game, like, that opening drive was really solid. And if it's just not a blocked field goal attempt that goes back for six the other way, I think that game plays out really differently. I I, I genuinely think it does. Um, so I, I'm going to take the Giants here and say they get back on track. What do you think about this one? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, if that does not happen, I agree. I think it goes a different way. Um, and uh, you, you just can't. You can't repeat that performance. Like you can't get any worse. Like they've, they've got to come out on top. They've got to. They're playing the Cardinals. Well, don't overthink it. But Cardinals last week against the Commanders, they almost they almost pulled it out. But Daniel yeah. Jones, Stop, Josh Dobbs. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a. I think that says a little bit more about how the Commanders. You know, they're still in some growing pains, so to speak. Right. Sam Howell right. and company. I, I think the Giants are a little further along with that. So I'm taking the G men on the road. All right. Speaking of New York teams, then we got the Jets and the Cowboys, and what a great game this could have been. Um, nine and a half points is a lot. If it's Zach Wilson, though, I'm taking Dallas. Yeah, um, he, he didn't, Zach Wilson didn't look absolutely horrible, but he didn't look good either. <laughs> so, um, right, he got the win, but yeah. he, he didn't look good at all. He, like, he got the win because Josh Allen, I guess, didn't want it. Like, it seemed it seemed like Josh Allen passed on it, so Zach Wilson just reluctantly accepted. Um, but I, I will give the Jets defense their flowers because that unit is still bananas good. But I also think Dallas' defense is ridiculous. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a long day for the Jets. Yeah, I agree. Um, again, nine and a half. I, th I think the Cowboys definitely win by more than that. Yeah. At home, first home game of the year. <clears throat> Jets defense may hang around a little bit, but, you know, they're going to get tired. They're going to get winded and, you know. I think the Cowboys kind of run away with it in the second half. So, yeah. I'll take the Cowboys. And, I mean, it's obviously hard to predict a game script, but I could almost see where, like, betting Jets' first half is a decent move and then betting, like, Dallas' second half might be your play. I could see where the you know the, the Jets' defense keeps it close enough for a while, but eventually offense dictates action. Sorry. Eventually the, the gates will open up. So, I guess something like that playing out. It could be a nice little betting angle there. We got Commanders and the Broncos. Broncos favored by three and a half. Give me the Commanders. This is also JT's lock of the week. Um... Uh, I said it last week. Denver's not good. Like, I I just don't know what to tell people. They're just not a very good team. Um, Russell Wilson is just not who he was four years ago. And just because they hired a new coach, not going to change that. So, um, yeah, they're at home. That's great and all. But um, I'll take the commanders and the points. See, with the Sean Payton hiring over the, in the offseason, I was a big believer. You sure. know, Denver Broncos is going to be back on top. 
And I watched the first game last week. He didn't look great. He didn't look terrible, though. You, got, you can't argue sure. that. He did not look terrible. So I'm going to give Not like points. week one, week two of last year with Hackett. Yeah, sure. Right, Maybe right, there's exactly. like a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. So I'm going to wait out, hold off for a few weeks just to like see if my mind will change. But So I'm going to go with the Broncos here at home. But we'll see within the next couple of weeks if Russell Wilson continues and just stays level or if he, you know, spikes. We'll sure. see. But, and we'll also need to see if Jerry Judy plays in this game too. Like, Absolutely. you know, that wide receiver room, like at one point it looked like a really nice strength with Tim Patrick and Judy and Sutton and then Marvin Mims. But now it's kind of like it's Cortland Sutton. They're not really using Mims. Judy's also out. Patrick's out for the year. It's like kind of unraveled pretty quickly there. Uh, three and a half points, though, I will say is like not a whole, whole lot. So I can see where you want to bet uh, Denver there. And I can understand why people do it. But I, I can see this being a field goal game. That's kind of why I'm leaning Washington here. Yeah, but, that's a tough. I thought it, I thought it was three. I didn't see three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we'll see where it, we'll see where it ends up at once we get to Sunday. This is another game too. Like if the total right now it's at thirty nine, if it creeps to forty and a half, I am smashing under. This game is going to be so low scoring, it's going to be bananas. So uh, if if somebody will bet it up for me, I will definitely smash under. All right, next game: Dolphins and Patriots. Man, oh man, oh. what a game from the Miami offense last week. And honestly, I know the defense didn't play great, but. Again, offense dictates action. They were playing a red hot Herbert, Kellen Moore offense. And ultimately, they got enough plays when they needed them, especially late. Like, it was Jalen Phillips with a couple of big sacks there in the fourth quarter that slowed down the Chargers offense just enough to hold on to the win. Spreads two and a half. Two has never lost to Bill Belichick. That's the one thing that makes me want to bet New England here. But with the spread being less than a field goal, give me the Dolphins, and I'll lay the two and a half points on the road. Yeah, like I was talking about it before we started recording, I'm just going to enjoy this game Sunday night. Sure. Probably no bets, but you know how JT is sometimes. He'll be like, oh, let's, let's go. Let's, here's the bet. Here's the play. I'm like, hmm, maybe sure. we'll see. But if I had to lean one way, dude, I got to go to the Dolphins as a Pats fan. It's tough, but the way we looked in the first quarter, I was Ooh, like, why am I even watching this? But then like I talked about in the beginning of the episode, we kind of turned it around a little bit. Sure. Probably should have beat Philly. But I think that Dolphins offense is going to be too much for this uh, Patriots defense. But we'll see. Yeah, and I mean, ultimately, when you look at Tyreek Hill and what he can do, plus Jalen Waddle and plus Brax Berrios and plus Cedric Will, all that sort of stuff that Miami has. Meanwhile, on the other side, New England's got a rookie who is still learning that he's got to get two feet down and inbounds. Like, which, I mean, yeah. I'm not really trying to crap on Keishon Butte, no pun intended, but it's that's that's what Mac Jones is having to throw to so yeah they got him a real OC but they're still lack when it comes to wide receivers so that's tough but I will say Mac did drop in a couple of dimes oh yeah you look good you competitive so yeah I mean we'll see like yeah like you said like that guy's got to figure out like that game on the line you got to get two feet in man like come on and it looked like he was in they showed the replay and I was like god damn so yeah it is what it is we'll see if we can bounce back but I'd love to bounce back here in a division game but I'll take the Dolphins. And, and, and a way too early, first touchdown score, I'm throwing the name out there. New England gets the ball first. They like to receive. And Ezekiel Elliott open scoring 7 nothing New England after the first drive. And then Miami pounces. Dude, I like I like the usage. Like, we, we were using him. I liked it. He looks good. He looks healthy. He looks fresh. Yeah. So, we'll see. He's in pretty good shape. So I think he's going to get some goal line touches. So, like, you know, and he's going to have some crazy odds. So, if you're going to bet it, just go for the biggest number possible. I'll go Zeke. Right. Uh, all right. Then we get to uh, two. We got two Monday Night Football games. We do. Oh, yeah. goodness. This is just absolutely heavenly. So we got the New Orleans Saints and the Carolina Panthers. Saints favored by three. I'm taking New Orleans here. Um, it definitely wasn't super pretty last week. Uh, but J.C. Horn gets banged up for the Panthers. We'll monitor his injury status and his health status going into this week. Um, but, yeah, Bryce Bryce Young, I think, generally looked pretty good. Had a couple of rough interceptions, both right to uh, Jesse Bates. But all, all in all, I think he didn't play a terrible game. But I do worry about his weapons. And on the other side, Michael Thomas looks pretty good right now. Chris Olave is a freak. Rashid Shahid's making big plays. I just got to trust that pass-catching core in New Orleans. I'll take the Saints lane to three. Yeah, you said that pretty well. Um I'll also take the Saints minus three. You got Olave, who looked great. <clears throat> Michael Thomas is finally back. Uh, so Derek Carr's got a few weapons. You got Kamara coming back. Not this week, right? Is he out no, three I, games? Is he three games? Yeah, I think he's, he's three games. Back. I should know. Kamara's still not back, but... Yeah, yeah. But Jamal yeah, Williams is... Jamal Williams is good enough. Like he's Right, good. yeah, yeah. And the Panthers. I didn't see much from the Panthers. So Bryce Young's still getting his feet wet. So I'll take the Saints here. And then the last game to talk about before we start talking... Locks of the week. 
the Cleveland Browns and my Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers are the reason why I'm 0-1 in the locks of the week category. They got the door busted off them against the San Francisco 49ers. And, you know, they had a weird week one win two years ago against Buffalo. Weird week one win last year against Cincy. I'm thinking, here it goes again. We're going to make it happen. We're going to take down San Francisco. And that couldn't have been any further from the truth. So, um, simply put, I think the Browns are legit. Like, we, I was already, like, leaning towards, like, this team could definitely make the playoffs. Um, and then I think week one just kind of backed up why I was leaning that way. Deshaun Watson still didn't look great, but like we talked about earlier on, weather was pretty rough. Um, Mark Cooper still looks like he's got it. Nick Chubb still runs great. The offensive line, even without Tyler Conklin, I think is really, really good. Um, and while Keanu Benton played well for the Steelers, they're also missing Cam Hayward for a few weeks now. And they're down Deontay Johnson. So I'm looking at the strengths of that Cleveland um, you know, offense, being able to run the ball. That's going to that's gonna be even more of a strength with Cam Hayward down on the field. And then I look at you know the Browns' pass rush against the Steelers' offensive line. That's a problem for me. And then also down Deontay Johnson, it's George Pickens, it's Allen Robinson, two guys that don't separate all that well. So I, I think this is going to be, I think it's going to be a tough one. I, I, honestly, I'm I'm a Steelers fan, so maybe this is an emotional hedge, but uh, I'm probably going to play Browns by minus six and a half, minus nine and a half. I think this one could get pretty ugly to end the weekend. Yeah, that was my next point. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I don't have many reads, so I'll kind of let you take it over. With everything you just talked about, I know the Browns are on the road. Why, why is it only at two? Why is the spread only a two? Yeah, well, I mean, I think part of it is like the Mike Tomlin effect um, and like the type of respect he kind of commands. And Pittsburgh does not lose home games consecutively very often. And we lost at home last week. So I think that's part of it. AFC North North games always play tough. Um, I'm looking at the total now, 39 and a half. Could potentially be some weather uh, in there as well. Uh, and also the fact that Deshaun Watson didn't look all that great. Um, so maybe that's part of it as well. But I, I would venture to say it's because it's division rivalry and uh, Mike Tomlin. That would be my guess. Because that's, that's what I was going to say. I, when you said Mike teased it up to six and a half, I was thinking the same thing. So Yeah, this, that's that's going to be a game I ladder. And you know what? If I'm wrong and the Steelers win, then my heart is happy. And that's all that really matters to me. Exactly, yeah. But awesome. Let's go ahead and start talking locks of the week. So you are one to know in the year by taking Eagles money line. Was it the juiciest bet? You're normally like the plus money god. So I was a little surprised to see you do that, but hey, you're one to know, and that's more than JT and I can say. Uh, but let's go ahead and start. We talked about JT's earlier. He's taking the commanders plus three and a half. Bold move. I don't know if I feel that confident in that. Uh, Mason, do you have your lock ready? <clears throat> yeah, it's just a just a one play. Okay. So Chargers minus three. Not wow, gonna like overthink it. It. Yeah, not going to overthink it. I just okay. think you know, Chargers are here, Titans are still here. So, like, I don't think it's going to be competitive at all. Maybe the first half is a little bit competitive. I think the Chargers run away with it. I don't think the Chargers, there's no shot they start 0-2, um, especially against this Titans team after the way I saw the Titans play last week. So, I'm going to go with the Chargers minus three. Yeah, and you got to think Brandon Staley is on the hot seat to where he's feeling it enough to, like, Okay, the like the sense of urgency has definitely got to be there. My lock of the week. I'm gonna do a teaser. You know how you know how I am. I gotta go to my teasers. They're they're my comfort food. Uh, I'm gonna take the San Francisco 49ers, take them all the way down to minus two. I'm gonna take the Eagles basically down to a pick them. So I'm getting Eagles minus half a point. The San Francisco 49ers against the LA Rams down to two. Um, little Thursday to Sunday teaser. Keep me active all weekend, right? But. Uh, to me, they're just two favorites that have no business losing this weekend compared to their matchup. Um, sure. Now, teasing favorites sometimes can be a little problematic. And if the Eagles lose on Thursday night, well, then this bet is a pretty quick wash. So, you know, take that. If it if it's a positive in your mind, cool. If it's a negative, then take that into account as well. But I'll take the teaser with the 49ers and the Eagles. To me, the two best teams in the NFC. Not a bad idea. But that does it for locks. Any other plays you got in mind? Any other player props you're keeping your eye on this week? Player props? Not, not off the top of my head, but... I think we both like the Browns this week. That's another good one. Um, yeah, and that's one where, like, if I can get Miles Garrett to get a sack, and it's not, like, right. insane, I'm probably playing that. Amari Cooper uh, against either Patrick Peterson or a rookie in Joey Porter Jr. I think he, barring rain, like, if there's rain, then I won't touch it. But if there's good enough conditions, Amari Cooper, I think, has a big game as well. Um, I'm scrolling through here. Travis Kelsey in a return. Jags are a little weak in the at the linebacking spot. I can see them being susceptible to damage over the middle of the field. Kelsey in a return game. That could definitely be a fun one. Stephon Diggs, I mean, he looked pretty good. Uh, I don't think he was the issue for Buffalo. Love him against the bad Raiders secondary. Um, let's see. Chargers, Titans, some Herbert props could be interesting there. But it also comes down to what the value is on this because I could see Herbert 
Like I could see instead of it being like over two and a half, I could see them being like over one and a half and then juicing the under. So it, it just comes down to what DraftKings ultimately decides to do. But any other player matchups you're looking at? I'm also Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow. I think they have a revenge game uh, or a bounce back game, I should say. I think they continue their strong success against the Ravens. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Maybe maybe Barkley getting back on track. <clears throat> sure. I could see Barkley having a pretty good game. No, and, it's, and it's the and it's the it's the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I, I would hope he does. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, that does it for our week two preview. Everybody, let us know your favorite plays of the week down below in the comment section. What's your favorite spread, favorite total? Also, give us some player props. It, we give you our best bets. Let me hear yours and help us out here as we try to make some money going into week two. But I want to say thank you to my co-host, Mason, this week. Hopefully, we'll have all uh, all of us back together with JT and Mason for the week three preview. But until then, my name is TJ. He's Mason. Until next time, we are signing off. <laughs>